So the problem we want to take a look at is to find all of the zeros, both rational and irrational, uh, of a polynomial, and we want to do it algebraically, and we're not going to give decimal solutions. We want the exact values of the zeros. And the polynomial we're going to take a look at is 2x to the third minus 25x to the second plus 56x minus 15. So this polynomial we're going to find has three zeros. One of those is going to be rational, the other two are going to be irrational. And we want to um, use the following method to find all of those zeros exactly. So the first thing we're going to need to do is to put this into our calculator. So we're going to take the 2x to the third minus 25x squared plus 56x minus 15 and put it into our y equals so that we can take a look at a graph. So if you have a TI-84 um, or one of those series, then you can put it into the Y equals screen. If you have a TI-Inspire, you're going to want to go to the graph and then put it into your function uh, menu there. So you want to go ahead and put that in uh, to the Y equals and let's get a graph for that polynomial. So that's the first step. And once you're taking a look at the graph, you may have to adjust your window a little bit um, to make sure everything fits in there. I usually start out with a uh, negative 10 to 10 on both the input axis and the output axis, the x-axis and y-axis, and that will usually give you a good place to start and you can zoom out uh, from there if you need to. So we want to first graph it. Once we have the graph and we can actually see all three of the x-intercepts, all three of the zeros, then we want to make some guesses. We want to figure out about where those are. So you're going to take a look and um, for each of the zeros, make a guess as to where those are. And our guesses, we want them to be to the nearest integer, nearest whole number, uh, so that when we do our table, that we'll actually have nice values in our table and we can actually hit those zeros that are rational if we have any. So we're going to make our three guesses for our zeros for this polynomial if you look and, and count the tick marks then you'll find we have three of them the first one is close to zero it's a little bit uh, a little bit more than zero so i'm going to say my first guess x equals zero the second one is between two and three so i'll say three and the third one is kind of close to ten so i'll just say that's about ten so we know that there's three times that it crosses the x-axis the input axis and these are the three times that it that it crosses the three x values that get us closest to that and so I'm going to use those uh, to make some adjustments so once I have my three guesses then what I want to do is I want to go to my table set menu okay the table set menu I want to adjust my table the x values in the table so that they change in a particular way I also want it to start at the first guess that I made, which was zero in this case. So go to the table set menu if you're in a TI-84 or 86. If you're using a TI-Inspire, you're going to have to, from your graph sheet, you're going to have to go to menu, down to table, and you're going to have to uh, insert a table or show the table. You can also hit control T, and that will pop up the table if you're using a TI-Inspire and you're on the graph screen. So once you have your table, and we want to go to the table set and set up these two things. We want to make the start at the first guess that we made, which in this case was zero. And then we want to make the table change um, in a particular way. We want to make it change as one over the leading coefficient. This actually comes from something called the rational root theorem. Uh, it says that if we have a polynomial, and we have rational roots, then those rational roots, if we have any, will be found at a fraction where the top of the fraction, the numerator, is a, a factor of the constant term, and the denominator, the bottom of the fraction, is a factor of the leading coefficient. So by setting our table change to 1 over the leading coefficient, we actually make the table hit all of those possible values that the rational root theorem says we could have a rational root. So we're going to set it up that way and then we're going to use our table that will plug in input values a lot faster than we could do it by hand. We're going to take that table and go through and see if we can find where those rational zeros are, if any. 
So we know we had our first guess at zero, so I set that as my table start. I want my change in table to be one half. In the TI-84 or 83, in the table set menu, it will show a little triangle and then TBL. That triangle is a delta, it means change in. So our change in table is going to be one half. It may change it to 0.5 and that is perfectly fine. Once we have our table uh, set up just like we want it, we're going to go to the table. It's going to start at zero and we're going to scroll around it so we can find one of our rational zeros. And if we have any rational zeros, they're going to show up in this table. So we're looking for where the output is zero. And we want the x value that makes us, uh, gives us a y value of zero. And if we scroll just a little bit, it doesn't take long, we'll find that there is a rational zero at x equals 2.5, two and a half, which as a fraction, that's going to be five for two. Uh, I'm going to use the fraction version because that's going to come in handy in a little bit when we um, get our factor um, and get rid of our fraction. So x equals 5 halves will give us our rational 0 for this polynomial. So once we have that looking through our table, we also find that at the other two, close to 0 and close to um, 10, those don't actually give us zero there at a rational root. That means that those two are actually irrational zeros. And those are the other two that we want to find. So I start by taking my original polynomial, which was the 2x to the third minus 25x squared plus 56x minus 15, and I'm going to factor that thing. The factor that we know we get from that zero that we just found, which was 5 halves, and if the zero is at 5 halves, we know the factor is x minus 5 halves. Okay, so that's our first factor. But instead of using the x minus 5 halves, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply through by a 2 in that first factor. That will get rid of the fraction of 5 halves, leave us with 5, and it will also uh, multiply 2 in front of the x. Now that 2 that we multiplied through actually came from the second factor. It would have been there if we would not have uh, multiplied through by 2. But I can, if I have a fraction as my root, I can actually multiply through by the denominator and get a factor that still has a 0 at 5 over 2, or 2 and a half. But there's no fractions in there anymore. And that's going to come in handy for our long division here in a second. So what we want to do, we want to find the other factor there. In order to do that, we take our original polynomial, divide it by 2x minus 5, which was the factor that we found from our 0, and then we could find the quadratic one that's left and find our other two irrational zeros. So our step 5, the next thing that we need to do is to divide, actually do that division. Uh, I'm going to do long division here. You can do synthetic division, um, but it, the long division is going to come in handy for us later on when we look at rational functions. So we're going to go through this process here. So we take the original polynomial divided by our factor, which was 2x minus 5. Now when we're doing this long division, we take a look at our first term, 2x, over in the factor, and look at our first term in the polynomial, 2x to the third. And we say 2x times what gives us 2x to the third. And up there on top, we have x squared because 2x times x squared gives us 2x to the third. So I'm going to multiply everything uh, in front by the x squared. So you multiply x squared times 2x minus 5 and you get 2x to the third minus 5x squared. So we write it underneath. We subtract it from the previous line. 2x to the third minus 2x to the third gives me 0. And then negative 25x squared minus a negative 5x squared gives me a negative 20x squared. The minus a negative will get us a positive there. And so then I drop down my next term, which was a plus 56x, and I do it over again. And I say 2x times what gives me negative 20x squared, and that is going to be a minus 10x. And then negative 10x times 2x minus 5 is going to be negative 20x squared. And then negative 10x times negative 5 is going to give me plus 50x. So I take, what, uh, I take that thing on top, minus 10x, multiply it times the factor out front, and then I subtract that from the previous line. So 
So I have a negative 20x squared minus a negative 20x squared. That's going to go away. Then I have a 56x minus 50x is going to give me a positive 6x. Drop down the next term, minus 15. And I say 2x times what gives me 6x? That's going to be positive 3. Multiply the 3 through times the 2x minus 5. And I get 6x minus 15. And I subtract that whole thing from the previous line. And notice the 6x minus 6x gives me 0. And the negative 15 minus the negative 15 gives me 0. Well, now that I'm in the, at the end of my polynomial and I have 0 left, that means I have no remainder. Okay, remember back from your fourth grade days, maybe fifth grade when you're doing long division, if you get to the end of the number and you have no remainder left, then that means that what you, uh, your quotient on top goes evenly into your polynomial that you have. And that actually gives us our quadratic factor of x squared minus 10x plus 3. So that is the process of long division. If you have a polynomial divided by another polynomial, then you can always do this process and always get, um, get what the quotient is along with the remainder. Now for our particular problem, the fact that it has no remainder means that we can actually write it as uh, two factors. Okay. So we're going to um, use this fact to now find our other two irrational zeros. And we're going to do that by using the quadratic formula. Because what we, uh, our quotient that we just found is actually our other quadratic factor, which gives us the other zero. So we're going to use the quadratic formula to find the irrational zeros that are left. So our original polynomial was 2x to the third <coughs> minus 25x squared plus 56x minus 15. And so we have the two factors, the first one that we found earlier, 2x minus 5, and then the other one that we just found, then x squared minus 10x plus 3. And we have these things to find the zeros that we want to know when it equals zero, what input for x will give us zero. We know the first factor. Now we just take a look at the second factor. We uh, find our a, b, and c. In order to do our quadratic formula, we find that a is 1, b is negative 10, c is 3. And then we use our quadratic formula, so negative of negative 10 plus or minus the square root of negative 10 squared minus 4 times the a, which is 1, times the c, which is 3. Uh, all of that stuff divided by 2 times the a, which was 1. Simplifying a little bit, we get positive 10, plus or minus. Uh, negative 10 squared is 100. 4 times 3 is 12, so 100 minus 12 is going to be 88 underneath the square root. All divided by 2. And that is going to be 10 plus or minus the square root of 88 over 2. Uh, the square root of 88 will simplify to 2 times the square root of 22. And then we have actually uh, 10 divided out of 2 from all three of those things. So 10 divided by 2 is 5, 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 2 divided by 2 is 1. That gives us the most simplified version 5 plus or minus the square root of 22. So this gives us our other two zeros, which are uh, irrational numbers. Square root of 22 uh, is an irrational number. So now we can proceed to actually write down our answers, write down our solutions. And these solutions are the input values that give us an output of zero. They are the zeros, all three of the zeros that we saw on the graph. We now know what they are exactly. x equals 5 over 2 and then x equals 5 plus or minus the square root of 22. And so notice we have one solution that we found rationally, 5 over 2, and then two solutions that we find with the, with the quadratic formula as irrational numbers, 5 plus or minus the square root of 22. And so what we did, we took a look at our polynomial. We found all of the zeros, both rational and irrational, that exist for this polynomial as real values. And we did that through a process of finding the rational zero first, then using that to um, take
take our factor and do long division, adding the original polynomial to find the quadratic piece, and then quadratic formula to find our last two uh, irrational zeros. And so there it is as our uh, first example on finding the zeros of the polynomial.